Is NSC and IM the last of its kind or the only one of its kind? An organization that has, and this is up for debate, doggedly maintained its stance through all these years and yet there is not a soul in Nagaland or Manipur Hills who does not have an opinion on NSCN. Their doings, their wrongdoings, their future, their role. You get the picture. At East Mojo, we know this. Whenever we do a story on NSCN, it garners more interest among viewers than, say, a press release on a government function. Although, who reads press release stories anyway? And for obvious reasons. So it is only fair that this week, I, Kalyan Deb, talk about NSCN I am. Why? Keep watching. Resume for months. The village of Assam in the 75th Independence Day. Recently, a statement allegedly issued by the NSCN IM on the occasion of the 20th National Congress of the Communist Party of China or the CPC went viral on social media. What surprised many was that the NSCN IM in its perpetrated communique accused India of re-engaging on the terms of the framework agreement and called on China to be a third party in order to break the Naga peace process deadlock. Now it is still up in the air whether the said statement was actually issued by the NSCN IM. But we have sources who confirm the same. And NSCN has not officially denied it. So we will play along. Cool? Now the question is, with peace talks with the Indian government reaching a deadlock, is the NSCN IM really looking for a support from the bad neighbor? Why does the NSCN IM have such a lingering fascination with China? China and, more importantly, Chinese political events have always been a source of inspiration for the NSCN. The outfit aims to establish a Greater Nagaland or Nagalim or the People's Republic of China based on Mao Zedong's ideology. Its manifesto is based on the principle of socialism for economic development and a spiritual outlook. Nagaland for Christ. Christ and Maoism? Okay, that is for some other time. This is, of course, not the first time NSCN IM has reached out to China. They know that by just mentioning China, they will have much more attention from everyone, especially the national media. One could argue that China is Indian media's bet noir, even more than Pakistan. Following the 1962 Indo-China conflict, Kughato Sukhai, the self-proclaimed Naga Prime Minister, wrote to Chinese leaders urging them to honour and follow their principle of safeguarding and upholding the cause of any suppressed nation of Mongolian stock. Fast forward to 1966. According to an article published by European Foundation for South Asian Studies, China covertly trained and procured weapons for a 300-strong contingent of Naga rebels in support of the Maoist revolution. The group returned to India in January 1968 and established a camp in the jungles of Jatsoma. Later, the Indian forces reportedly recovered a trail of documents leading back to Chinese support from their camp. As recently as 2011, as per reports, Wang Qing, a Chinese spy disguised as a TV reporter, was arrested and deported after she reportedly visited the NSCN IM's headquarters. Indian authorities claimed that Qing admitted to being a spy for a Chinese intelligence agency. The 2010 arrest of Anthony Shimre, a key official and major arms procurer for the NSCN IM who had been operating out of Bangkok opened up new angles. An Indian government report alleged that the NSCN IM was offered the chance to purchase surface-to-air missiles by Chinese agents. Post his release, Shimre went on to become the army chief of the NSCN IM. In an interview with The Week in 2017, ex-Naga army chief Hunting Shimrang claimed that the Indian government only woke up to the issue of the Nagas after the outfit had reached out to China in the early days of the Naga struggle. Shimrang had also said, Will India wake up only if the Naga army starts doing that again? The same publication two years later reported that Shimrang, accompanied by other cadres, had reached Yunnan in China, seeking support. So why are the NSCN IM and China apparently so close-knit? One reason could be that China had reportedly agreed to host a permanent NSCN IM representative base out of Kunming in Yunnan province. Nagaland's proximity to Arunachal Pradesh, a region contested by both India and China, 
could be seen as a cause for the latter's warmth towards the armed insurgents. According to a 2020 Bloomberg report, Indian officials believe China is assisting rebel groups that have stepped up attacks on its border with Myanmar. Now, it is hard to say if the Chinese leadership really is sympathetic towards the NSC and IAM as there is not enough hard evidence to substantiate the claims. But if the insurgents are indeed asking for the Chinese Communist Party's help in the talks, it would be absurd to think that China is totally oblivious to the unfolding situation. And for China, NSCN is yet another useful ally in keeping India on its toes. The question is, where does this leave the peace talks? And will people continue to pay the price while diplomacy takes its sweet time? Don't forget to like, share and subscribe to East Mojo. For any queries, put them down in the comments section below and press on the bell icon for notifications.